to the game, everybody. Also, greetings to everyone who's tuning in through Dota TV. Um, greetings to you all as well, because obviously we are catering to multiple audiences here. Uh, I'm Toby One, joined by Merlini. If you read the title at the top of your box, you'll also know our Twitter tags and all that other jazz. I don't think there's a title there. Uh, not on Twitch. Oh, I'm talking inside the game. Because uh... I filled that one in. Hence I fly my Australian flag proudly every single time. Every time. You don't even live there anymore, Toby. No, I don't. I really don't. I, like, I live in a... You're a fake Australian. What? Actually, that's not true. Every time I hear you say Dota, I, then I get back to me. You know what? See, Australians actually disagree with me, saying that like I say Dota incorrectly. Oh. But I, honestly, I don't hear the difference. You were talking about true. Liquid this morning. I was like, there's no R in Fada. <laughs> but that, that's a story for Fata. another day. I, I've actually I've, I've broken that one. What about Fada? Oh, uh, well, Fader, Fader is what I always used to call him. Yeah, and everyone's like, "Man, it's it's, it's Fader." Yes. Yeah. Oh, you said it without an R. That's amazing. Did I? You can actually still try. Wow. Him. Okay. <laughs> Get on with this banning phase. Empire. They banned with almost every single one of their games. No surprise at all. Versus OG. the original gangsters and Beastmaster. I think he's going to be the most banned here in the tournament. Mm -hmm. No use in rehashing why he should be a lot of vision. OG, actually, they banned both vision heroes. There's only there only two main ones. I'd say the third one is Slark, which I think is actually pretty important and crucial because he's one of the few good heroes with night vision. Mm -hmm. What a surprise as well. This is something I was, uh, I was grilling mad about this earlier today at uh, breakfast. And uh, and I asked him, I was like, okay, so so tell me about, like, how would you face Empire? He's like, okay, well, there's there's basically three core heroes that Empire will always want to play. One of them is Beastmaster. They will take this at all times. Uh, the other two is either Phoenix or Earth Spirit. They always will drop one of these two heroes in the first phase because you just you're never going to ban out both. And it looks like OG will actually take the Earth Spirit themselves here in the second. Excellent. Homework. <laughs> Homework for them. How does how does OG combo this? Because like okay, we let's actually just talk about Phoenix for a bit. This hero has seemed to be like it just destroys every single game. Like Sunray seems to be doing so much. A repositioning support hero seems to do so much as well. How do you deal with Phoenix, both in lane phase as well as team fight? So we all know the strengths of Phoenix, which is Sunray plus a little bit of team fight with Supernova, but his weakness, which you really need to capitalize on, firstly, he's really bad at getting levels early. He's also really bad at zoning support. Sunray level one is okay, but I think now that the cooldown's pretty long, like a lot of people can actually like go onto him without fear of recourse because he's like if you get him low and then he turns around and sunrays you you just get owned so yeah. you have like a bigger window to actually deal with them but mostly you have to keep them low level as soon as possible but then again even with the most recent patch we have the tome of experience which kind of makes life a little bit easier for phoenix players so that's that's kind of why i think he's been number one because sunray has is still really strong the damage didn't get nerfed at all but mostly it's like T tome of experience just makes a lot more su uh, supports viable yeah so Phoenix can just do his thing. Darkseer is well combining, so it will actually be a support Phoenix, so not a big surprise at all. Uh, but this is kind of like what we were expecting from Team Empire, right? Like, more movement towards team fight. Yes, they're an, I, I would not say they're a safe team when it comes to having multiple cores. It's like, ah, are they really going to outscale us? Let's pick more late game. They're more the type of team that's like, okay, well, they picked greedy cores. So let's just team fight, force them to fight. If not, they'll lose all their towers. We might not be able to close out the game, but we will crush them in the mid game. I still want to see Scandals here. Like, out of, out of all the heroes I'm actually wondering about, I want to see how their tempo control the Scandal goes. Um, and then the space then gets created elsewhere. And Puck's then... always good for Scandal. Hmm? I'm always down for Puck with a Scandal. Puck? I like Puck plus Phoenix, Puck plus Starks here I think is really good. It's very good versus the Rubbing Earth Spirit, and it's very elusive versus the Life Stealer. All pretty good traits for Scandal's hero. Do you get worried with the early Earth Spirit rotations? Like, I know he, he won't be able to have his silence very early on when you gain He's Puck. one of the best heroes versus the Earth Spirit rotations, I would say. Uh, it also takes it away from OG. I don't think they run Puck too often just because Miracle's hero pool is very large and by that nature they don't pick him the same hero very often. Interesting. I, I'm wondering why OG banned out the VS. Like, Batrider was the first thing that came to my mind, also because Scandal plays a very mean Batrider in mid. 
Uh, but then they ban out, like, two of Scandal's favorite heroes, like the Invoker and the Batrider, both taken out by Afterlife himself. It's also really good at dealing with Life Stealer, I would say. And just the minus armor is amazingly good, and it makes a little bit more sense now. Death Prophet, one of his, one of her biggest struggles is just being slightly out of position. You just get punished super hard. The two heroes that can get you out of position, Faceless, or sorry, the Bat Rider as well as the Vengeful Spirit. That's where uh, she kind of suffers the most. Some people like to pair the Vengeful Spirit with the Death Prophet, so you can kind of save her in that aspect. Um, but this is it's a nice touch from OG. Yeah. Gives them the stability I was looking for. It's stable lanes, a little bit of early fighting if you get ganked up. More importantly, and though, they have a team fight. Team. Yeah, I think that you need to have a lot of team fight versus Empire's lineup. When you lead off with Phoenix Darks here, you know they're going to be coming at you with four or five with an early mech. Yeah. I still want to see something more to deal with the Phoenix than just a, like a raged up life. They have two silences. You can't ignore that. Oh, so you actually stop the Phoenix from Nova Ring in the first place. Hmm? So you think about like just stopping the Phoenix from Nova Ring in the first place. Or the Sunray. Like the oh, silence yeah. AoE is very large from Death Prophet. Uh, the Geomagnetic Grip from Earth Spirit too can also cancel it or even a Boulder Smash. All these are pretty good with dealing with the Phoenix. So I would say like Sunray is not the biggest of the problems right now. <laughs> I've heard a couple of teams talking about how to make this hero viable again. And when I heard, when I hear Bulba saying this hero can't be viable again, <laughs> currently, no matter how hard you try, that's it's it doesn't really fit EG's playstyle though, because they're they're out late game. They generally just out late game people with their better decision making. I think for teams that are much much crisper at fighting early and honestly just better than OG or EG right now, which there are a lot of teams, I think they can make clockwork work. We've seen DC use it fairly often, and a lot of teams have been turning to the clockwork, albeit he is far more risky than other ones because he's a poor Iron Talon carrier. <laughs> yep. Uh, we'll see if Moon can make it work. He'll be taking that thing to the off lane. So we get a safe lane, life steal, a mid lane, death profit, uh, and then the Earth Spirit plus one more support to come. Not a lot of disables on OG's lineup. Um, then again, Empire, like, they've actually got a decent amount of control, and they've got Alliance, so they're fine. They can't tick most of their boxes for control as well. But an anti mage pickup. I actually think their team fight might be a little bit lacking right now. Team Empire? Yep. With the M with the anti-mage pick, you're worried about Death Prophet pushing down all your T1s and T2s prior to 20, and then T-Mage is also not particularly good at dealing with the ancient offensive lifestealer, the Radiance. Uh, like, his team is just going to be really, like, they're all going to have to run away. I've seen, like, Slarks with Scotty, like, Juggernauts. These heroes are really good at dealing with the ancient lifestealer, but anti-mage is not. Well, that is a nice round out for... <laughs> The high ground defense and the five on five, and making sure anti mage will always be relevant past 15. Yep. Th this actually almost okay. Um, this actually almost feels more like one of the uh, the classic four protect one strats. You get a lot of good team fight rotations early on from like Magnus, Lion, uh, combinations with Darkseer, and just keep letting the anti mage farm across the map. And OG don't really have anything great to stop it. Like, Disruptor was the final ban out from Empire, probably worried about what happens when OG tries to do something about the enemy. Yeah, the Keeper's underrated, though. Well, we've seen Fly play a lot of, like, Dazzle and Undying, which is a little bit more early game than the Keeper of Light, but the Keeper of Light is usually not going to be playing, like, defensively in this. Like, you, a lot of the times he's just there to make sure the lanes aren't pushing the tower. You just illuminate whatever you push out the wave. But I think in this scenario, he's actually going to be in a much different role, which is making sure the, the people don't die during the big ultimates. Making sure that he gets a scepter up very early. They already banned two of the Vision heroes, Beastmaster, Night Stalker, so they make sure they had the Vision superiority. I actually think that they kind of had this whole draft premeditated from band number two. As okay. soon as I saw them ban Beastmaster and Nightstalker, okay, they, they clearly want a vision advantage. No one really pick, picks Keeper anymore, but he is one of the only heroes that has unobstructed vision. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, if he can actually land an Illuminate to heal during a Darkseer combo or a Magnus combo, they can just straight win the game right there. If they can outlast one round of ultimates at a very key moment, they win with Death Prophet push. Uh, you're starting to make me worry about what I was really worried about, Team Empire. That one team fight that goes horribly, horribly wrong, and OG's drafted well for it. So, out to the lanes, let's get ourselves a little bit of a bearing as uh, we do kick off. So we'll go through Team Empire to start with because their lanes are a little bit more standard here. We're going to have Afterlife headed towards the top lane as the Darkseer. 
into the mid is currently support Maposhka. Uh, obviously, he won't remain there. Scandal will be the man moving there as the Magnus. That puts Ramses into that safe lane. Number one position as the Anti Mage and King R. He'll be the Lion going up against the off lane of OG, which currently has three heroes down here. Uh, with Moon's Clockwork, he will be the core in this off lane with Flying Crit, the two supports for OG as the Keeper of the Light and Earth Spirit putting our mid No Tail, who is wearing a very fashionable outfit this evening. And up towards the top lane, it'll be Mirror. Miracle's live stealer. A lot of regeneration on him. It looks like they're going to give him a lot of space up on that top lane alone. Uh, does that mean we look for flying crits movements? Like, where's their rotation? Where's their presence meant to be? It depends on if they can get this D ward on bottom first. That is one of the most important things to do if you want to actually pressure the offlaner. Make sure they don't know where your two supports are. They should always be scared of two supports, whether or not they are showing on the map. And... I, th I saw them ping it out early. They might have gotten early vision with their Observer Ward of their own. Oh. That blocks his pool camp. Are we going to brawl? I think we're about to brawl. Maposhka dies himself through. Crick goes for the boulder. Misses everything. They go for the Siphon over on Scandal. It comes a full Illuminant with the skewer back. He might be able to get away to safety, especially when King R hits the double stun. Scandal's back up the hill. Ramsey forced to go for Blink early on. Escaping out as well. So they brawl for the runes. Who actually got them? It was the Magnus and the Live Stealer who ended up taking them. Everyone will now settle themselves into the lanes. That was pretty close. With the hit boulder, that would have been a kill. And I'm actually surprised that that boulder did not hit. Still, nice play all around from both teams. Unfortunately, that D-Ward you're looking for on bottom lane went the other way. Uh, Flying just managed to D-Ward the Observe Ward. Oh, that's, that's what they need. That's what OG need to do if yeah. they want to pressure the AM. That is that's super important because you always want to be scared of like the the Keeper like can't get his blast off if they have vision of him. And right now he's in the trees. Bam, two heroes, 200 damage to illuminate. He has two clarities to keep the pressure rolling and Moon is going to have a fantastic time in this lane. I always have massive flashbacks to um, the way IG used to run their, their tri lanes with the Keeper of the Light where they ran like Wind Ranger and Earthshaker together. Mm -hmm. And always that continuous spam on the core, making life so difficult. After uh, life speaking on top. of difficult, yeah, after life, copying a lot of damage. He's put down double iron shells, so Miracle as well as Crit can't make an easy job of this. And just plays perfectly around him. But on bottom lane, fly, damage from King R. Okay, no, there's no follow up. Ramsey's just too busy looking at his wounds back between the tier 1 and tier 2 tower farming. This is not a situation that you want to be in as an anti-mage. You don't really want to have to fare yourself out region this early, especially when it's close to the bottle timing of the mid laner, and he is almost dead. So I'm pretty sure he would have liked to have a salve this early, but not that many people expect this sort of lane coming out. Nice shockwave coming out to help out OG a little bit there. And this is the kind of game where you, you get really, really concerned who are you it's, concerned it's, for, Toby? What? Who are you concerned for? Myself missing first spot in the first game of the Major. <laughs> to put it pretty simply. Because <laughs> you just never know where the rotations can come from. Fly's keeping everyone, like Ramsey's so low on this bottom lane, I don't know how far he goes out. But you don't have any cogs over on the clockwork. Moon's just gone for battery assault as well as rocket. I just so follow Earth continuous Spirit. range spam. Earth Spirit should be the main one. Yeah. But then who's he go on? Like he goes on Scandal. Scandal's actually short of mana at the moment, so he can't skewer out. He does have a Siphon. He has two Siphons. Uh, but they, they need Crit to hit the boulder. And he has a war. He's sitting pretty they don't, much they don't on top see of up the hill. Now they do. Like, no tell actually had to back up on top of the hill to get that vision, so they can boulder forward. The Spirit Siphons, will it be enough? Scandal's dropping low, skewers away the attacks, it reaches him! And that'll be First Blood going the way of OG Scandal, almost escaping by the skin of his teeth, but almost is not enough. I'm very surprised that he died there, considering there was an Observer Ward just watching the Earth Spirit facing that lane. I think he was really agree and perhaps maybe should have waited for his full skewer mana. I think he was just shy when he went up to that lane. But bottom lane, OG are getting quite a lot being able to stack up that camp. It's going to be very useful for Fly trying to keep back up in levels. Ramsey's is still getting a lot of CS himself. Um, hello, top lane. Miracle is low. Looks like Afterlife is... Okay, they're still causing issues here on the lane. But double iron shells, it's it's so difficult for them to stand there. So maybe that's something else we should look for from Empire. So, okay, Ramsey's getting some decent money. The Darkseer is doing pretty well up on this top lane. Is this enough for Empire to be happy with their early game, even with First Blood lost? I think happy for them is not really the term that we should be looking for because I think they'd be happy with 
obviously if they're ahead, they'd be happy. If they're even, I think they'd be happy too. And slightly behind, they should be happy. But I think is is it what they expected? I would say this is about what they expected. I think the most important part is that Darkseer hasn't yet died. Magnus versus DP is not going to be a great lane. And unfortunately, Scandal did take a spill and give up first blood. But that's going to happen at some point for them. So I think that's... it's. Probably slightly better than expected, I would say. The only problem is Ramses is unable to really free farm, but he does have his Ring of Health. I kind of feel like this will probably change as well once... Actually, is it even really that bad? Because like, I was thinking like this top lane, with the Darkseer not dying, Ramses continues to take so much damage, but like he's just battering down the hatches. And Afterlife keeps keeping crit on that top lane, or when crit comes to the mid lane, I like, guess the gank was successful the first time around, but... Scandal now backs up and they just waste time of crit. This time he's making the most of that Observer Ward, even if it's only got 26 seconds left. Well, that's something cool that they're doing in the bottom lane because Ramses is out of region and unable to access a chicken. They're just simply using Sunray from Maposhka to heal him up and, you know, pretty much sacrificing a lot of his time to beef up the anti mage, which is also not that bad. I think the Empire's uh, fight is like way better. Skewa, King R, try to go for a combination there with a stun. Not gonna happen perfectly, but Crick came too far and keep the tower. He's definitely gonna go down and no tell. Tries to act more as an intimidation factor to keep Empire off him, but that's gonna be an unsuccessful gank from Crit, giving a kill over towards the Empire mid. Remember when Magnus was like first pick every game? I remember Scandal's Magnus being one of the better ones, and most of the like top tier Magnuses can hit RPs when given the chance. But I think the the ones that are really really good, uh, S4, Scandal, etc., they can hit the difficult skewers in lane, mm -hmm. and that is you know what's kind of gotten him through this early game and made up for his first kill. Well, Crit does drop an Observer Ward. It was in full vision of Empire's own Observer oh, they're, Ward. They're forcing a rotation right now on bottom lane. It's no cell coming over. They want to get Ramses to blink, or you just use the silence. So say goodbye to the Anti-Mage. You'll go down. Nice skill build coming out from No-Tail. You don't see this very often, the 2-1-2. Two, two. A lot of people just play very greedily and max soul uh, Spirit Siphon by level 7. But the lo one level of Silence, going to be amazing versus the Phoenix, amazing versus the Darkseer, and pretty much good versus their entire team. It actually makes it so easy as well for OG to push. The fact that no tells ro rotation timing, he's got his exorcism up and running. Moon and Fly have gone for this uh, also creep clearance. Like with that stack they have on the side, they've been using uh, just Rocket and Illumina to farm that up. So that's where they're getting their bonus levels on these heroes, which means that hookshot, like I thought it was going to be heavily delayed from Moon, like his ultimate, just because they had so many heroes on that bottom lane, but he's still looking at a half decent timing. So when's it time for Empire to actually make their move? Generally it's around 10 minutes, just because that's when you get the Tome. And it'll help like Lion get his finger, the Supernova, that's generally where and when you want to fight. But they're having a lot of troubles finding levels. I don't even think a Tome will boost, uh, boost them to level 6. They, as you mentioned already, OG have very good control of the Radiant Jungle. And these heroes are just not good at right-clicking neutrals. Well, they'll try and make up some levels by smoking. King Ara Maposhka headed towards the mid. Oh, will see if they can find a kill. But he has doing... haste. There's no way they go on no till. <laughs> I don't think they can get that kill. Maybe, uh, maybe with a hex. I... That's really difficult. You have to get it straight away. You'd, you'd actually almost require a scandal skewer to skewer RP. forward to get into an RP. There's top lane, Afterlife, gonna be initiated on, just starts his TP out. Unfortunately, they're still kicked to Valble, surging himself out, 44 HP. Needs to be one more hit, and in comes Notel with the kill secure. The Rock was also on his way. The RP instantly committed to Notel. He's gonna go down underneath that tier one tower. So Empire will trade the off laner for the mid laner of OG. There was some error in clicking on No Tail's part. He kind of just ran around in a circle. I, th he might have just clicked in a weird place. I think he, he might have been clicking like towards the river and hit that cliff or something like that. But I do not think that's what he intended to do at all, and ended up just getting RP'd. He should have easily been able to escape with the haste rune. Not that big a deal because it's not like that would have tr really transitioned to, into a tower push for them. There's no Basilius on the life stealer, no exorcism up on the death prophet at least at that moment. Mm -hmm. But it's it's still a death that you don't want to give away. Well. With it, actually, uh, buys a little bit more time as well for Empire. I don't want to say they're playing catch up, but I'm watching these net worths 
overall net worth just no. Oh, this is something different. We have the. It's not too different, but it's the anti mage with the vanguard. So they're hoping that he can actually frontline much earlier and he can be involved early. Scandal getting destroyed in the mid. Yeah, try and run this one off. Mosper is siphon, so he'll skewer himself away. Yet half life behind in case he needs to surge him. They decided to hover off it, and Kinga also Radiant's smoked up. Potentially able to loop around it again. No tail getting aggressive when his exorcism is coming up cooldown. So the anti mage can actually front line. Not all like when you go vanguard, you don't have that much damage, but they have the ion shield this time for the damage and the empower. So he can be a threat much before any plus damage items from Battle Fury. They're the waiting light. for Moon King R body blocks up nicely. The sun ray is going to turn off. Moon can't get himself outside the cogs. The skill, however, from Scandal will take him out. Moon hexed up. They really want to kill off this clockwork, but he's just so damn tanky. They'll back up past the tier one tower. And there's nothing much really to give from Team Empire. They really need level 6 to get some damage. Like, they're, they had four heroes try and commit to a clockwork with not that much strength, plus 9 strength from his items. Yeah, you almost see like Finger of Death fly. He may have actually given him a freebie here. Tries to run it off with the shockwave. Yep, there it is. It will be, in fact, a freebie. He was going for the D ward on the obs. Of funny because now this is probably going to bring in a D ward from Empire in, retu in return, which removes OG's Observer ward. Armlet ready from Lifestealer. I like that early Blightstone pickup. Majority of Lifestealer's damage is physical and it helps them push. A little bit different than the Ring of Basilius, but easier to convert if you want to push towers down very early and you have the Exorcism to aid in the physical damage output department. Mm hmm. So Let's get to do a quick check uh, while we get ourselves a small downtime here. Chat, let me know how the stream is going, uh, both audio, actually primarily audio. Yeah. Tell me if it actually sounds Let him know how bad his camera work is, how hey, many, how many kills that he's good. missed. My camera work I actually tried How many myself. runes we haven't seen, how many smokes that... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I've <laughs> seen everything, Merlini. Literally have the eye I like getting you angry. Ah, you trigger me, bro. King Art, this time, he's gonna gank with that finger of death. They want no tail, but Moon's gonna hookshot himself forward. Scandal can't get the RP off. He gets silenced up by no tail. Now he's gonna skewer himself away. She's dragging Moon with him and his dead corpse, but this will not stop no tail. Keeps the pressure up. Spirit siphoning around. He'll be able to fight for this, but now Ramsey's comes into the fight. Mana point only level one's available. The damage is almost enough to kill off no tail. They'll try and moon him up. I mean, moon him up, earn him up by Moon. The cogs are also available up in one second time, so Moon can create some space, allowing OG to retreat away from this fight, but maybe not. Ramsey's jumping in deeper. He doesn't really have that much more to fight, but because of the Vanguard, he's stronger, so he can continue to stand here on the front lines. And with the Battery Assault, not easy to hit him off, but with that Iron Shot on him, he still finds that extra damage, pushed away, and I think finally Ramsey's gonna say, enough is enough. Well, except the fact that the Magnus died. Nice push by Miracle in the meantime, taking down that T1 tower while this brawl was going down in the mid lane. And I was going to say, Notail has been pretty key on his silences right before the RP with the Arcane Rune, which would have secured Magnus maybe like 1500 gold um, total, rather, as opposed to his 700 gold right now. And they really need that Blink Dagger. They're just lacking so many of their tools. Their first finger didn't yield a kill. Phoenix, still not level 6 yet. Yep. There is no Blink on the Magnus. And Anti-Mage, the Ion Shell came a little bit late on him. He wasn't able to get the damage up with that he needed. But so many early games item coming out for OG. You see all these small items on Clockwork. You know, the, the small strength helps them keep alive for that 4 on 1 engagement. That little bit of strength and the drums coming out from Death Prophet to help her from the Mana Void and Finger. And he here we go, our first and best bomb. Uh, this is going to be interesting. Fly's going to engage on bottom lane. Blinding Light's going to push him away. Ramsey just wants to stay close to it. Mana League makes it a little bit more difficult. Now Moon hooks shots in, catching out King R. And with a surprise infest inside of Crypt, the follow-up kick. Ramsey gets hit. King R will still go down here. Moon's Battery Assault will ensure that, not to mention the basic attack. But Ramsey's will survive, and that was a four-man smoke maneuver from OG, including infest committal. They're not getting that much from the exorcism, though. That was a hasted Exorcism Death Prophet, and that one death may have set her back more than I thought. However, they do have Reef Call, one of the most underrated abilities from Keeper to Light. And he actually has a pretty penny, even though he died in that mid lane. Fly sitting at 1700 gold, one of the most farm supports, the most farm support in this game, by a large margin. Nice play from Moon. Create the space. Empire can't even rotate around because that Observer Ward this up, like, 
They know a vampire is going to loop around. Oh, they, don't, they don't have Alt Finger and they don't have Supernova. Oh, oh Open Wounds going to go on King. I guess pushed away. And after life, oh, starts running around in circles with both Surge as well as Four Staff. He's going to be the primary man to help Empire outmaneuver OG. But Empire just delaying the inevitable. Like, they know this tower is going to go down. They try and get Ramsey's farm. Uh, Scandal getting some space up on top lane as well. And he needs it because he needs that Blink Dagger. Like, it's still delayed. They still need to get this. And now you actually get a double damage rune as well. If OG feel inclined, they potentially could even just slip into Roshan. It would take them a long time though without exorcism, and I don't know if they want to commit exorcism at this point. I I guess it's pretty safe to do so. Let's see what life stealer goes for oh, after the echo saber. There's an infest on crit, and okay, now they get rid of that observer one. So okay, it's gonna be fine. They know Mukposhka's around there, but not exactly. But yeah, you, okay, maybe that's a good indication. <laughs> the sun break kicks off, and uh, <laughs> that's one way to find him. Do you have Exorcism up now? Still 26 seconds away. But you've now actually got the Echo Saber plus oh, that they... double damage rune on Miracle. Yep, they passed him that one. Yep. That's nice. I think they can do it without the without the uh, Exorcism because of this DD. That's pretty big for them. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, he's not using Rage on cooldown. I think they would just want to take this down ASAP. Maybe he's scared to take off the DD, but that was changed some time ago where Magic Immunity does not take off double damage. Oh, he has that plenty of mana. Finally up. Oh, he he actually oh. did commit ultimate. Actually, did put exorcism. I thought you'd hold on to that now, because then you could just push, right? No, well, they're clearly okay with the pace of the game at the moment. Anti mage, his farm's not out of control because he did go vanguard. This is kind of, you know, I'm not that big of a fan of vanguard, but I do see its merits. And sometimes it's just far riskier, though. Like at at that point in the game where he actually did come to fight, the vanguard didn't really save him from dying. It's not like they were actually even trying to kill him at all. Yeah. And he needed just a little bit more damage. So let's say he did even like perseverance plus like a broadsword. Maybe he would have been able to get that kill. But is, is it still right to go into a Vlad's after you get the vanguard? Like if you have empower, yes. Okay. This, without Empower, I would almost certainly say Battle Fury is the right choice. But if you have Empower, you have a free Battle Fury. Yeah. It just means that like Magnus has to kind of stick with him most of the time. Like, it's, it's yeah. not that simple. Like Any Mage can just do his own thing in the, that whole full protect one thing we talked about during the drafting phase. Yeah, it, it's just really slow. You you notice it so much when you don't have Empower and you're farming the opposite side of the jungle. You're like, man, I wish I had Empower. Luckily yeah. for him, it lasts a pretty long time. Here comes OG. Running down the mid yeah, no towards wish. the tier two tower. They the top wish they had exorcism. Hmm? They probably wish they had exorcism. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but Keeper of Light's making very good progress on the scepter. That is what I think OG is really looking forward to. I don't think they'll get it before the 20 minute mark, which is when the next daytime cycle is going to end. But mm -hmm. they should definitely have it by 24 minutes. And with that, with level two, hopefully level three exorcism, I think they can do some serious base damage to Empire. But do they actually really even want to push in the Empire with this massive? Team fight lineup and the blink already online for Magnus. He talked about how Empire was a team that usually they have a lead and then you, they generally like make one big mistake and then you see everything go go downwards. But I think yeah. OG is actually in that position right now where they have the potential to lose the game off one bad push. I agree. I'm, I'm actually wondering too, like with this trade off. If this is actually what OG were also searching for. Like, they're finally going to bring down this tier 2 tower, but Empire was doing a pretty damn good job of keeping OG out of it. Uh, Scandal, okay, Surge, you're not going to find much. Actually, he actually has a lot of vision. Thanks to that Observer Ward, they're still sitting on the mid lane. You could see most of what OG was planning. But the AM has already brought that top tier 2 tower down to half life. Until the, the life stealer came in at that last moment, there was actually a half decent trade there for Empire. There was space for Ramses to farm and damage inflicted to buildings. So I think that OG are probably thinking ahead. So they, they don't want to push high ground. But if they don't want to push high ground, what's their other option? Their lineup is actually not that well suited for going to the late game. Their off laner is a clockwork, doesn't scale that well. Their mid laner is a death prophet. Scales decently, but no tails not amazingly farmed by any means. So I think what they need to do and what they need to concentrate on is actually being able to kill the anti-mage when he's split pushing. And that requires a lot of mobility. You, mm -hmm. I don't know who's actually going to be able to... It's going to be crit, right? 
depends. I've seen some unique strategies, such as an Orchid coming out from Clockwork. That's not that far-fetched. I've seen that used, but he's going to get that far too late to actually be effective versus the Anti-Mage because you'll have Orchid by then. Maybe, like, um, a Shadow Blade on someone so they can actually scout him out. But actually what I see here is the Blink on crit as you mentioned he's going to be the key hero i think to actually deal with the anti-mage and okay you can silence him if he mantas then you stun him you have enough damage to tell which one's a real real one and then you uh, have another silence to follow up but that's only gonna last for so yeah, long like ramty's just is. finished up his yasha um so he'll get the mantras he said like you'll just spell the first silence what if ramsey's also gets to a point where he has a bkb you don't want to get bkb on anti-mage is, is, is it gonna make him like just too weak it's he already has a couple items that doesn't really help his farm speed that much. Uh, firstly, no battle fury. Secondly, he had to go vanguard, or he went vanguard rather. And if you go BKB, that's a, another three items that just kind of takes away from the hero a lot. If you wanted like a magic immune fighter, you would just pick life stealer, like OG did, or a juggernaut, or something like that who can fight a lot more, still benefit from them power and whatnot. But I think if if you want to go BKB, you might as well not have picked anti mage. So they're aiming more for split push because their late game is better. I, I think their late game is a lot better because like wall is also pretty good going into the late game lion his hex never really falls off if he gets a blink the real caveat there and king r you know kind of he has his off games he has his amazing games and this one seems to be somewhere in the middle but his net worth is nowhere near the middle instead he has a whopping eight cs Huge. ramses uh yeah i mean he'll actually tp out in time he, they were pretty close. They, if they had started the recall a little bit earlier, maybe they would have gotten a hook shot. I don't know if they had the angle, but I'm actually it was looking more towards mid. No tell. There's your RP. They're gonna turn on the Sunray with the double iron shells in the back. No tell. Look at his BKB off and then triggers the Invis rune, allowing him to escape out. And Moon, well, he wants to go in straight into the Nova from Phoenix. So Moon, well, he'll stay there with his blade melt turned on. The stun will not connect. They get the space. And then a quick Icarus dive away. Crit wants to go for more. Blink forward gets to kick onto Afterlife. That stun not affecting Miracle. Not while the rage is up, but Afterlife surges away on 70 life, but the Mana League stops him from escaping out. So Life Stealer will be able to find the kill thanks to the stun coming in for the Mana League. I think fly. this is where the push starts. They can recall no till in, use his exorcism. They don't have RP, they don't have wall, they don't have supernova. This is an amazing time for OG to play. The only thing that they don't have going for them is, is that it's nighttime, but that's not that big of a deal because three huge ultimates are on cooldown and AT Mage still does not have his main style. He does not want to fight right now, but he might be forced to. Problem is keeping that creep wave alive too. Oh, no tell. Oh, you we'll mean Sunray? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Did... From range, Moon wants to do some damage to the Blade Mount, but the Sunray wears off. And I, w I wonder if this is a counter to Sunray. Uh, the, the Blade Mount? No. Oh, Ramses. Can he get out? No, he can't. He can't blink in time. Crit silences were absolutely on the mark, and that damage from the Life Stealer is so huge. So now there's no anti mage. But your exorcism runs out in about five seconds time in mid. I think the uh, the counter that they're exploring right now is a keeper keeper uh, eggs. It's awesome. almost strictly better than Sunray, minus the fact that it doesn't do pure damage. <laughs> that was a ballsy attempt from Scandal. Oh, if only it were daytime. OG would be so happy with this push. Now ultimates are coming off cooldown again. Darkseer's Wall of Replicas come off cooldown. Magnus's RP is up in three, and OG know this. Yep. It's not their time. Are they back it out? They got AM, though. Yeah. It slows him down, but he's still sitting at 9.1k net worth. And finish up the mana style recipe, so he's not too slowed up. And in fact, it looks like Empire, they want to go for more. Scandal's vision, however, there is nothing, nothing on the dire side of the map. So they're going in completely blind into this scenario. The rocket flying over from Moon might give an indication that he's over in the jungle, but they don't see anything else. I actually do not like that smoke play from Empire. If they get a kill on anyone, they just recall with the 24 minute daytime, and then they just. If they commit any ultimates, OG will just push five strong. I think the only kill that's probably worth it for them is Miracle, but it's extremely difficult to kill Miracle, and I think most of them had sensed it out, so they probably would have gotten a low priority kill, wasted a smoke, and potentially used an ultimate that would have cost them uh, a T3 and a Rax. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, for me, it was more desperation than anything. They were hoping to get... If they got two heroes, I think it'd be worth it, but with the way that it was set up, and with the way that OG were playing, it's more likely than not that they were going to get one.
And here we go. Infested crit has been smoked up. They have a reserve reward in the mid lane. They want to get Scandal. Scandal is the big one because Ramsey's without Empower is not very strong, and RP is the one that sets everything up for them. It's so, funny because I also want to keep my eyes up on top lane at the same time because they're prepping against No Tal. If No Tal dies, he can just buy back and get recalled. He's actually getting recalled in right now. Well, but here, here we go. Come. Ramsey's, what do you see? You don't see anything, in fact, and they're all around him, and in fact, the jump in is a double kick on Candle and King R with a follow-up hook shot from Moon. They're able to control him, Ramsey's will blink into the tree lines and TP out safely. But you lost your Magnus and you're lying very, very quickly. Crit, so but they, fast. they wasted the exorcism. It was way too premature. They don't actually have any creeps going in, and... By the time the creeps get there, they're gonna have like maybe five seconds left on the exorcism, and this may not be the game ending for them, but it still is not that great. Empire, they didn't blow any ultimates yet. Magnus coming up in 15. Well, they're gonna force the mid. Fortification for Empire, so yeah, this is not gonna happen. Imagine if they're they had extras in the right now. They would just pop it right now with the creeps coming in the bottom, and yeah. then they would get the tower down and then some. But now they have to. Oh, now they're gonna burn a BKB over on Nortel. He's down to eight seconds on that BKB. Yeah, now they have to back off because their timing is just—it's—it's it's uh, hard to do. They need daytime and they need hard. exorcism. Surge is coming forward. Scandal's got blink and RP. He just goes for the skewer. It's gonna be over on Moon. The heck's not right on the target, but Moon. Well, is there gonna be enough damage? He backs it up with his one charge. The Sunray still burning him down. And with the mana void, Rance finds the kill. However, he loses his Magnus in the process. And OG still doesn't have any kill. major ultis available. So most of these plays from Empire, they're just so desperate. They, they're not in a good position to fight. As soon as they chase down the hill, OG can split up and fight on their own kind of high ground. They have the trees on the right side. Oh man, Miracle just does so much damage. Yeah, Maposhka has not had a great game at all on that Phoenix. It even happened back when we were only like five, six minutes into the game. He was doing the same thing to Maposhka before. But Miracle's happy with this. Like, he's not taking any massive damage. Continuing to work through the racks, the bottom creep wave's in there. They don't have Lion as a major threat when he drops down low, thanks to the fact that Crit managed to get a solo kill on him underneath that tier 3 tower. So they take the full mid racks without really having to commit that much. Nope. They should be able to go for another one. Extra up in 20. Keep Burke and keep everyone alive with drop by dropping a scepter, shotgunning himself, and just using Illuminate. And at the moment, OG very comfortable, or OG very comfortable in the lead, and Magnus still have yet to hit that game-winning RP for Empire. And as more and more buildings fall, the chances seem slimmer and slimmer because now they can wrap in through mid. You can have like a infested Earth Spirit blink in through the mid lane while Clockwork approaches from the bottom, and then the Death Prophet approaches head on. And the more spread out OG are, the, the less likely they're going to get hit by a huge vacuum wall and an RP combo. Ramses. Getting mana leaked, Moon. Well, he does have a target if he wants to have a crack at it. He decides against it. There was an observe ward from the dire side that saw Ramsey's movement. OG won't be able to keep that kind of vision up for much longer, primarily because Afterlife has purchased a gem. So they're trying to get rid of OG's vision advantage, even if they are walking around with an Ag's coddle. Problem is, no BKBs on Empire. If they get hit by. A silence, which is from Earth Spirit or from Death Prophet, and are very large AOE, then none of them can get out of it. Ideally, you want Greaves plus BKB on Magnus, so you don't have to worry about either of them. And then on Anti Mage, here he has the Manta. That's great. Darkseer does not have a BKB either, and he has been initiated on a fair amount. It also helps for simple things like uh, Mana Leak, like open wounds, which you have to deal with, but you don't want to blow a big cooldown. It's not like you want to you want to BKB it off, but Guardian Greaves is kind of like that nice, oh, it's not that big of a cooldown, but I needed to get out of this debuff. And Empire really need to scan out that ward for once. Now the gem finally comes close enough, they understand the ward is there. But if anyone goes to deward that, they die to the infested uh, Earth Spirit combo. So 20 seconds left of daytime with the Ion Shell pushing out the last creep in mid, it looks like they will not get another hit. Their the observer ward actually, the fly is now dewarding, gives them, well, gave them really good vision of OG. So it's a bold move from Empire, pushing into daytime. They probably want to wait until nighttime so they can actually maybe get the jump in. I don't know if they saw Ramsey's pop in mid. I think they saw him pop without the blink, which means everyone smoked. Oh, RG. It just hits nighttime. They've lost their vision advantage. Even if they were having a positional advantage over Empire. Well, it's like, uh... Empire, again. Another, another smoke which doesn't come to anything. As much as I generally am a fan of BOTs, 
I actually don't think this is a good game for Prophet to get it. Uh, I think he wants to get it so he can like split push out the lanes and then uh, get Keeper. Uh, actually, I think he's... get recalled back in. Yeah, big problem is he's not strong enough to actually deal with an anti mage push. Like if she tries to push out a lane that anti mage is pushing in, which is generally the lane that you are going to be pushing out. He, he can just blink on the Death Prophet and then B he, she might have to BKB, she might like die to Mana Void, she might still die after the BKB if no one goes to help, so... Who else is going to do the push right now? Because life I stealer Ideally you want life stealer with... to have the BOTs, I think. Because he can kind of just destroy the anti-mage in a man fight if it gets to any point. He just seems to take a different role though in this game, which is that... that gank with crit at all times. Yep. But you're also scared of no tail dying. Scandal. There's so. your RP. No tail drags back. Wait for that BKB. They forced off him into the earth spike. So no tail is easily picked. This is also when you want like the, you know, you want more HP as a death prophet. A lot of them would turn a vit booster into eventual octarine. Maybe even the vit booster into an atos. But you need to survive. Like look how easy it was for them to for them to kill her. Maybe they wait for her respawn and then they can recall her. And then they don't have the RP up, but still, it's not good to just lose your death profit. Did you see how easy that was? Mm -hmm. It's, it's not, a, not a good thing if you're OG. Not at all. And this is just starting to buy more and more time for Ramses to almost actually, for the first time in this game, have more net worth than oh, Miracle, Miracle does. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he's got he's got a hell of a lot, and I'm assuming he's just going to be looking into something like the Abyssal. Now they find another one! They found Miracle! Picking him up, throwing it back, they throw the Nova down too, Miracle's going to burn. So say goodbye to the Aegis, the Immortal. By the time he comes up, the Nova has already been expended. So Miracle's up and Moon, the Hawk shot! It actually caught the posture on the way back out. Half-Life pushed outside of the Cogs. He'll have it on space now. In comes Ramsey. Look for that Mana Void. Watch for the spill. Moves off all of his mana. No tug and a BKB, as well as exits him up. And well, there goes Afterlife, the Gemma True Sight lost into the hands of Crit, and a quick buyback comes out from Apostka. They really want to keep that Sunray play on Miracle, keeping him away from the tower. No tell, very far forward. The hookshot comes in. They find Ramsey in close. He does have that BKB over on the Animage. He'll turn it on just to escape from the fight, while the rest of OG continue to take out that bottom Rax. It's only the melee, however. The range will remain alive, and in fact, OG are going back home. Including the life stealer infested into the clockwork, but okay, so that's how they do it. They're gonna recall him back in just to jump in. Miracle, come on back. There's uh, Miracle, Finger of Death gonna go on him. Hook shot forward from Moon. They catch out Scandal. There's no four star to get him out of this one for the moment. He's trying to beat his way through the cogs, but he just can't do it fast enough. And Ramsey doesn't know where he wants to fight from. Triggers off the mana star, starts to burn a little bit more mana. Can't do enough, but however, he does have that level 3 Mana Void, so he needs someone who's low, and Moon may just be that man. Mana Void through, the kick's coming in, Crit coming in close as well, they're all comes up pretty close together, but then Crit, the silence is too good, Ramses has to remain there being magnetized, now the silence will wear off, jump forward, there's a quick kill over onto the, over onto the clockwork, putting the gem back on the deck. So, Empire able to regather that, and finally, it looks like OG will be uh, stopping this. Are you sure they're going to stop? It's almost daytime. I am fairly certain they're going to stop. Life Stealer can come in and with a recall, I think they want to keep this train going. Um, Aposhka is currently dying to a Crete Wave. It's definitely a super Crete Wave. I don't think they should let up though. I think Anti-Mage is... He's, he's getting there. He didn't die in that last fight. He'll have Butterflies soon. And I think they need to secure themselves another set of racks before the next Roche and then make another push with Aegis Cheese. I think that's a, that's a good timeline for them. And... See heroes starting to flock towards the bottom lane for them. Let's see if Crit and Moon will be recalled to the bottom and I love how you get positional fly. The blink dagger keeper of the light after the, after getting an Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, I I even liked his he tried to control the AM too by blinking in the mana leaking and blinding light. Actually, I was still waiting for Ramdes to get that. Like, every time it looked like he had a really good mana void timing. Like, Crit was there to silence him up, or no time was straight after it. Like, he always seemed to have problems just getting that big combo off, even if OG were clumping for it. That's because no one else can really be in front. Magnus is far too valuable a target to sacrifice himself early in the fight. Lion doesn't have a blink, so it's not like he can jump. Phoenix is kind of still working on Midas, I think, 30 minutes into the game. He doesn't have any HP to really do anything. Darkseer is kind of their, their other one, but he still does not have Greaves. I don't even know if he's going for Greaves, but he also does not have a blink. No Greaves. Like, he just can't go in. No BKB. 
Yeah, at this point, you you actually ask yourself a question like, does Empire just put everything into their combo? Because then you would bypass your Greaves, then you would get your Blink Dagger, and say it's all for the glory of one huge should, team fight which Ramses can destroy in. OG have a lot of tools to deal with it. They have the BKB on Death Prophet, very good for that Wombo combo. They have Rage on Life Stealer as well as an Infest Dodge. Uh, they don't have the pool yet on Earth Spirit on the two heroes, so that tool is not available to them. Uh, as well as having the uh, high ground vision from the Keeper of Light. It's very hard to get a blink initiation against that because if you see you, they just jump with the Earth Spirit and the Life Stealer, and that hero's dead if he doesn't have BKB. So I, I think that. Yeah, obviously you want to get like a five man, a five man RP, but OG just not allowing that, and too many defensive cooldowns used, and very careful play as well. Empire will not have anything to do with that top tier two tower defense. They actually use their scan to look to the right side of the tower to try and find out if OG were attempting some kind of gank, but OG were actually just behind the creep wave and over to the trees to the left. So what is No Tail going to buy with his Void Stone? Is it going to be a scythe or? Yules. I would assume a scythe because it's getting pretty late into the game. They're gonna need something up against the anti mage. Yeah, it, it looks like it's gonna be scythe. They're working on hard lockdown right now. It looks like the ba uh, basher. Put me up for life sealer. If you can get, if you actually get the full abyssal blade up and you got a scythe of vice, the issue is like, like, well, then the abyssal blade is just used to control Ramsey's during his BKB time. But that allows this team to hopefully come in with a big RP. Oh, yeah. Roshan respawning, and we'll, we'll see. 20 seconds, we'll check out the timer. Ramsey's is inching closer towards that butterfly. Once he's got that too, because if you are going to go for this Basher, that means there's no true hit. There's no Monkey King bar on any hero from OG. No, tr I mean, no true hit, true strike from Anti-Mage as well. He has to deal with the Blinding Light. He has to yeah. save Manta for the Silence. Well, at that point, he just dropped something else. Like, does he go Monkey King by himself, or nah, does he actually uh, need lockdown? BKB is good enough for now. I think maybe he wants one later. Actually, yeah. what what do you get? Heart is generally the option, but heart is very bad versus life stealer generally. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not part of the plan, Ramses. Uh, he, he just burnt his uh, nine second BKB. Yeah. I, I, actually, so we'll did they see contested. the end of that? No, they didn't see the end no, of that. No, they didn't see. Uh, the, the thing that came out was from Empire himself. I think it was Ramsey just saying, Yo, guys, I, I just... I, I just screwed up a little bit. Inconsequential, I think, in the grand scheme of things. But... Yeah. It just means, like, at the timing of it, too, like, OG is now doing Roshan. There's no way Empire are gonna try and fight this anyway. Well, OG get a little lucky, I think, with the near instantaneous respawn. And as soon as Empire, I saw all the minimap icons turn to the left. Let's get out of here. <laughs> OG also saw the courier making this way up, so they, they know the butterfly is coming in for Ramses now. God, he's, he's getting so big, like he's actually the highest net worth on the field. I know like OG is still sitting about 17.5k net worth in front. The experience lead is not as big, but they've still got the mid ranks and the bottom melee in their favor. But it's it's just hard to say they can deal with this anti-mage now that we're, we're, we're approaching the 40 minute mark. They, they have what looks like it's going to be another site coming out for the Earth Spirit very soon. As well as that a... much money? <laughs> he has a Yules on top of that. He's only died once this entire game. Not too shabby. And when, he's, when he's got more net worth than both the Lion and the... Uh, well, I don't want to even include the Phoenix in that one because he's only got 3k net worth. Almost as Midas! <laughs> Huge! Game-changing moment. <laughs> Again, the timing for OG just hasn't worked out. They have Aegis, but now it's nighttime. <laughs> yep. It's like, okay, now it's daytime and they don't have Exorcism. Or they lost Death Prophet or something just does not really work. I've been able to close the game. I got that too, Toby. Whew. Okay. I, I felt your heart skip a beat. Yeah, I did. So did the stream. I'm gonna double check and make sure it comes up in time. Oh, this is not the oh, timing the for this. Set up. This is not the timing for this. Ramsey's. Okay, Sunray's there. I'll blink him away to safety and nothing's gonna happen. Okay, so his stream is back up again. We are gonna be fine. We just had ourselves a short little spike on the line. Not entirely sure why, but I can definitely see the stream on my side. But you can all watch this fight as the OG prepare themselves. What happened in the very short time we were down, Anti-Mage got a little bit caught out of position, but nothing really came from it. Because it's just 
too much of a commitment almost from OG. Like, if you're gonna go, you gotta go huge. You don't go huge, because <laughs> then you get RP'd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, then you, that's, that's your predicament, right? I think crit plus one is generally good enough. Crit plus miracle, but oh, not when he has a butterfly. Like an exorcism missed up, fortification already can happen, scandal, four staffing himself forward. He was searching for hit on miracle, but now you've backed up. That's already one third of the exorcism being wasted for minimal damage, but he did break, break fortification. I like what they did for when Nozio had died, it was just oh, using jump. rage. Miracle! Oh, he got the rage up in time. Scandal uh, tried to skewer him away, so now this top tier 3 tower is gone. Afterlife's got a little bit of extra damage there, no tell. There's only a couple of seconds left at Exorcism, so they won't do any damage, it's gonna be repaired anyway, but Miracle isolated for the moment. Now he's gonna rage back up again. No tell wants to go in for more, the Exorcism is coming back in, so he's lost that damage. Nova is down as well. Silence on Nop, that Phoenix is gonna pop in just a moment. Miracle's also very close to so the double sun of Moon, actually hooked up into crit. The shockwave is gonna be there. They kill off Death Drop, but they look towards Miracle. He can't finish off the racks, it's so low. The Cardi is actually gonna the job. Randy, however, says no. He'll stop it. Miracle comes back to life. He'll do the work. Moon, a well-off target hookshot. Can't find his target, but the infested life stealer has basically hitched a ride in the back of the hotel. And now they've got an isolated Randy until now. Mana Void, not enough damage for it. Four staff away. Chris still playing Silly Buggers back inside the base. They get what they came for, OG. Even if it was scrappy, they managed to take out the melee racks on the bottom and uh, on the top, and the top uh, bottom range racks has also gone down. And that's in fact Magus. Miracle just comes in to finish the job. I like the itemization for Miracle. Uh, the minus armor really synergizes. Ooh, nice afterlife. Four staff into the back. Ramsey wants to go up. Miracle's got a load of ball protecting him right now. And Scandal, well, he blocks the hook shot. He's going to lose his life, or is he? He actually pushes Moon Pack in. Unfortunately for him, Keeper, the light stuck with it. And now is OG all over the Empire base. They're going to look for more. Another hook shot of him one second time. Moon, okay. Yep, of course, it's Moon. He's going in for this one and will be punished by Ramsey. It's an easy kill for him. You've still got Megas up and running. But it's just a free gold there for Ramsey's. The most iconic fight for me this game was actually that four on one onto Moon. It's just they don't have any damage. People are hexed up and they have good control. They have like a vacuum, but into what? Like Magnus has RP, but RP itself doesn't actually do that much damage. So overall, they did not have any damage. And this is without a mech and without a pipe on Dire. Imagine if they actually built defensively. How difficult of a time would Empire have killing any of the heroes? They did itemize offensively with a you know, Dezo B, uh, AC to nail down the towers, although Death Prophet did go for the Black King Bar. But overall, I would say it's far more offensive than defensive. And because of that, they were actually able to go through their push and rely on their positioning rather than items to cope with Empire's lack of damage, but tr tremendous amount of setup. That's a lot of money on that courier. It's the uh, going to be the end of the Shiva's guard, I believe. Oh, courier! No! <gasps> you... Oops! 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 Radiance Ancient is under dire victory.